nós uh, um prazer podermos contar nesta altura do ano, digamos, praticamente na abertura do ano letivo, com a sua presença. Uh, o que o professor irá ter são duas palestras, sendo que esta é a primeira, e dado o teor das, das palestras, uh, é realmente transversal. Isto serve para os alunos de Relações Comerciais Internacionais, de Gestão de Recursos Humanos, de Turismo, uh, porque estamos a falar de negócios e de marketing também. A palestra vai eh, assentar eh, no que é como fazer, como negociar com os alemães eh, e vamos focar os aspectos eh, interculturais eh, nas relações comerciais internacionais. Olá, boa tarde. Unfortunately, I know only some words in Portuguese, so please apologize to continue in English. So, is it difficult to understand me? Okay, I promise you to speak slowly. Okay? Well, so, uh, the colleague has introduced me already, so I am a lecturer from a German partner university of your institute. How is management being done? Uh, it depends on the hierarchy in a company. There are countries which, um, let's say, do have a high degree on power distance in the management. So there is a big boss and all others beyond. And there are cultures with a, let's say, a, a decision-making process more in a democratic way. There is a decision-making body, not there is no boss no single boss, there are more bosses and they are discussing and then find a solution. So uh, if you don't know about these management styles and think uh, if you're negotiating with the boss in Germany, you think, okay, he's a decision maker. No, he's not. Uh, he's just maybe the one who is communicating these uh, matters to his colleagues. So what they did in intercultural uh, science to form some so-called clusters, a cluster means uh, it contains more countries and these clusters differ from the other clusters. How to distinct cultures. There are many ways no, to find out uh, the different language, tribes and things like this. The three main distinction criteria are these. There are either high context cultures or low context cultures. Either task oriented cultures or relationship oriented cultures or individual or group oriented cultures. So with high context cultures, in the communication there is a very strong focus on interpersonal relationship. So this means, uh, first you need to establish a personal relationship to your business partners before you start talking about business and before you're arranging business matters. With high context cultures, normally you don't need to express everything explicitly. You don't need to write down all the details of the negotiations uh, uh, explicitly. So this means the spoken words are more important than written documents, written papers and contracts, things like this. Well, the communication is indirect. This means people tend to speak in between the lines. In between the lines, they never normally express a hard no. Do you accept my products? Uh, maybe let me have a look whether you have other products. No, that's a polite excuse. So low context means there is a high emphasis on formal written documentation. Everything is based on a legal agreement. So this means people don't trust each other. All is based on contracts, all is based on very uh, 
explicit explanations. So I want to know all the details of the product and all which is written down in small letters, maybe on the paperwork, followed to the contract. It's very legal based. And in low context cultures, there is a very fat oriented and direct communication. So people say directly what they want. No, sorry, I don't accept your price. Give me another price. This is considered rude in high context cultures. What are task-oriented cultures? They are the so-called doers, you know, to do, yeah? from to do, doers. And doers get things done through tasks, structures, plans, targets, controls, controlling. And in tendency, they work out things in a monochronic way, in a monochronic, one after another. So motivators in task-oriented cultures are promotion, promotion, reputation, ranks, titles, status symbols. Relationship-oriented cultures tend to be beers. Beers get things done spontaneously, unplanned and unstructured. Yeah. So this is why they are normally more able to adjust. They are more flexible. They are more easy for improvisation. They have always a plan B and C and D. If something is wrong, okay, let's do that way. That is considered being flexible but it doesn't have a strict order, rule, plan, structure, and deadlines, things like this, which are typical for task-oriented cultures. And they are tendency polychronic. Polychronic means you can do many things at once. Well, let's find out who is who in our clusters. So, what do you think? Who is more task-oriented and who is more relationship-oriented among these six clusters? Do you think Anglo? Task. Yeah, they're very task-oriented. They concentrate on, in business relations, first on business matters. Latin? Relationship-oriented? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it differs from country to country. The more south you go, the more relationship-oriented you have. Uh, even the French say they are tendency a mix of task and relationship, but particular uh, Spaniards, Portuguese, not just from scientific results, but also from personal experience, are very relationship-oriented. Uh, so right the opposite. The Germanics, task, yeah. The Nordics, task. Well, the Slavonians, relationship, yes, yes, very relationship oriented. And, uh, well, the Orientals, extremely relationship oriented. Finally, the third criteria, individual cultures, and collective cultures. That was the third criteria. So for individual cultures, there is a tendency for a personal definition through the use of personal characteristics and achievements. So this means the one needs to bring out the best performance of itself, and if everybody does, it's the best for the whole society. Well, there is a high degree of personal independence. This means people need more space around them. Think of the space in an office. In individual cultures, people don't want to share space in an office. They want individual offices. They want individual corporate cars. In collective cultures, there is a more subordination of the individuals to the group. And the group is considered being as a family. It's not just the personal family, it's also the company, maybe, which is considered being a family. So, uh, this means individuals subordinate to groups and communities. Huh? So, they share values, they share, maybe, work with others in order to have the thinking, if we do it together, it's better for everything, I have to do it individually. Huh? So, the sum of individualism in this way is not as considered being as good as the sum of the group 
efficiency, the group efforts. Who is individual and who is collective? Once again, the Anglos, individuals. Yeah, they're, they're the most individuals. Think of uh, short-term profit orientation, shareholder value principle, things like this. Uh, it's typical for Anglo-Saxonian companies and Anglo-Saxonian people. Well, the Latins, collective, yeah, tendency collective. The family plays an essential role. In some fields, the family can also be the nation. It can also be the company, it can also be the region. But well, Germanics are individuals. Tendency depends, the Catholics less, the Protestants more. The Nordics, very individual. Well, they have a high degree of individualism. The Slavonians, collective, very collective. Think of socialist times, socialist ideology, oriental. Yeah, it's extremely collective. If you do business with Germans, well, maybe you remember just these three strict rules. So think of that they are low context communicators. They are very task oriented. They might ask you for an agenda. They may ask you for minutes. It does not have to be uh, a matter of, let's say, personal mistrust. And they are very individualistic. So they don't like it uh, to be, let's say, integrated too strongly into group pressure, so they want their personal space, and this is why they differ heavily. Well, whenever you do business with people from other cultures, there are the so-called Ten Commandments. Forget number two to ten, Always remember number one, in every nation, in every culture, whatever you do, with whomever you do business, you never get wrong if you smile. And even if you don't understand the others, smile. Marketing relations, how to do promotion for a product. It differs heavily from country to country. How to do a promotion campaign. So maybe uh, the, you can see the task-oriented cultures. Maybe see uh, washing powder in Germany. Germany. If, how do they do commercials for washing powders? They go, well, this one is cleaner, this one is safer, this one is much better. And how do they do it in, in, in Latin cultures? So they do it completely different way of commercials. They say this is good for the family, this is good for everybody. So, and it's quite critical also when you produce cars, for example, now, there is a high degree of individualism. Cars work in the same way. But uh, if you think on the colors of cars, uh, the, the tendency is though some countries prefer to have black cars, white cars, brown cars, or, or also in the interior decorations. So some countries in Germany, let's say so-called wagon cars are very popular, the wagons. Uh, I don't see many wagon cars here. It's the same companies, the, the producers are the same, but the, the style is locally adjusted. So then let's finish our class. Thank you for the audience. Thank you.